Well, how was your childhood growing up? There's there's a lot to it, but I'll just start from like when you were born to like 11 because you moved from you're born in New York and you went to Houston and the UK, then back in New York City at mm-hmm. 11. So that's that's quite the childhood for a kid. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, my childhood was definitely I was, I was moving around quite a bit, um, but it was great. It was I feel like um, it sounds like a lot when you put it that way, um, but. I mean, all things considered, I, I spent a good chunk of time, yeah, in Houston, like five or five or so years, and then <clears> five, <throat> six years, I guess, in, in the UK, and then moved back to, yeah, Connecticut, where I spent um, a couple years um, from there on out, went to middle and high school there. Um, and yeah, it was great. It was uh, as normal, um, as normal as things could be, right, considering mm-hmm. the circumstances when I was doing the acting thing. But yeah, definitely lots of moving. If you don't mind my asking, then what did your uh, parents do that uh, allowed you to had you moving around the globe? <laughs> yeah, um, it was my it was my dad's job actually. It's not yeah, it's not a, a really exciting story. There's no like, <laughs> um, you know, English citizen in the family or anything like that. My dad just mm-hmm. worked in finance, and we had a lot of great opportunities growing up to to kind of uh, hop around. So we. That brought us to to Houston and then to England. Um, we had no roots in, in either. Um, okay. <laughs> that was why uh, the, the why behind the moving. Where is your uh, favorite place that you spent? Um, pro- that's a good question. I feel like wherever I lived served a great purpose for like when I was there, right? So whatever mm-hmm. age range I was in, it was really, really wonderful um, for me to spend those yeah. years there. Um, so, but I would say I'm a little biased towards, towards England. It was great. Yeah. Um, but also, <laughs> also growing up in Connecticut was nice too. Um, don't really remember a ton of Texas cause I was on the younger side and, mm-hmm. um, it's been, been some, uh, a couple of years since, since those days. Um, but yeah, probably England. I read somewhere that you, I think when you moved back to New York city, you studied ballet for like a decade. Oh gosh. Oh no, that must be, I don't know where that came from. I did, I did. Um, uh, I love that you're bringing this up. I have not even thought about that, um, in a while. I, yeah, I did dance growing up. So I did it from like, um, when, how old was I probably like, I think like two, three to, up to like 16 or 17. I, I was, okay. I'm going to be honest. I was not that good at it. <laughs> I think <laughs> I was fine. Um, yeah, but it was fun. It was fun. I did ballet and, and jazz and all that stuff. I feel like I was mediocre but um yeah it was it was it was a good thing to do on the side right everybody's got to have mm. a little hobby or um something like that when they're when they're growing up so dance is definitely one of them for me is that what you uh what you guys did then whenever you moved you had to find a new get a yeah yeah there was that school, whatever yeah um for, so dance was just more of like a hobby on the side um sure. I didn't do that through, <laughs> I guess I did do it like through school programs here and there. But um, it was like, again, I was not good enough, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to be somebody who was like in dance school professionally. No, that was not, um, that was not my reality. But um, no, it was, it was fun, fun hobby. I don't um, know if I could pick that back up and do it um, remotely well <laughs> these days, but it was fun. Okay. And then how yeah. did you, how did you wind up getting into acting? Yeah. Uh, so that happened when I was living in the UK, I was like, um, I think it was like 10 or 11 years old. Um, and I remember at the time they, I went to an international school there. Um, and they would always have at the time, they literally had a daily bulletin that they would put up on a bulletin board every day. Um, it was, you know, in the olden days, um, and the daily bulletin had like all this information of like, you know, things happening around the school activities, extracurriculars. And, um, because we're an international school, they would always, or pretty often, fairly often have casting directors come to the school looking for, you know, international or like American kids, um, for projects that were shooting, you know, in the UK or in Europe. Mm. Um, because it was just cheaper to do that, I think, to discover, you know, an American yeah. overseas rather than, you know, casting for them straight out of the U.S. So it was very common that casting directors would come to my school and um, people that I knew would get parts all the time. Um, and my favorite story is that um, prior to my landing the part, that my first part that I did, the first project that I did, um, I actually made my brother... Uh, audition for something after school with me and um they ended up seeing 
my little sister out in the hallway because my mom begrudgingly like picked her up from preschool and, and sat with us while I forced my brother to do this like audition with me because all my okay. school friends were doing it. Mm-hmm. They saw my little sister, invited her in, and my brother and sister got the part in this film. It was like <clears> they had no, it was, they were only in it for like one shot. Um, and it was a film called The Man Who Cried. Ne- you'd never heard of it. It's the most obscure thing, but it was with Johnny Depp. Oh. Uh, Tina Ricci, Kate Blanchett. So like such a great cast. John Turturro, who did Monk later, obviously, mm. an episode of Monk or two. Um, but so, yeah, they ended up getting this part. And I was so like uh, livid at the time, for lack of a better word, because I was just like a little little kid. And that was, uh, you know, I was the one who forced my brother to, yeah, to do you that. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I uh, the same casting director, casting director came back a year or two later. I skipped Girl Scouts with a bunch of my girlfriends and uh, did the same sort of thing. Uh, we all just stayed after school to audition for a project. And then I ended up going back a couple of times. And um, long story short, I ended up getting the part. And that just kind of, you know, kicked everything off for me. That was a, a film called My House in Umbria yeah. that shot for um, eight weeks in, in Italy. Um, and it was great. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a question about that. But before that, um, it says your brother and sister, it has what, the internet has them labeled as actors. As well. <laughs> they actually, they actually actors. Or they just, no, no, actors? no. That, that was their one yeah, stint. Not, and they'll uh, never, yeah, they'll never let, or they didn't let me live it down when I was a kid. I was <laughs> so like, so um, jealous at the time, um, which is so funny. Um, yeah. So they are listed, I guess, on IMDb and that's their, their claim to fame, but no, they were never interested in that. My brother had baseball and my sister had soccer and they had very, yeah, they went back to, to reality. I, for some reason decided to attach myself to the, the acting thing, but you mm-hmm. would look at us. I, my mom's always like, people definitely think I'm the mega stage mom, like forcing my kids mm-hmm. into all this stuff, but really it was me just like <laughs> trying to, trying to land a part, like all my little friends at my, my school. So mm-hmm. Yeah, weird back story. Yeah, no, that's that's, <laughs> that's definitely unique. Yeah, you talked about how you got your your first acting role in the TV film My House in Umbria, and uh, you want to talk a little more about that because you actually won an award for that. Yeah, I did. Um, which is that's another thing I forgot about until you just said <laughs> um, that. Yeah, I don't even really remember um, that process. Um, yeah, the film was great. It shot for eight weeks in Italy. Um, as I mentioned before, that was in two thousand and um, 2002, okay. I think so a long time ago, 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I was 10, 10 years old, um, at the time. And yeah, I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I just, mm. you know, lived, lived for it, just showed up and was like, wow, this is a whole new world. I had no idea what I was in for. Um, and it was great. It was, yeah. And each, did I say it was an HBO project, um, oh, no, shot with, with, with some really great, um, folks on the, cast like maggie smith um who obviously you know did the harry potter franchise uh, down mm-hmm. abby all that stuff so she is excellent and she's such a such a pro so that was really cool to get to work with her and i definitely took it for granted at the time <laughs> um who else chris cooper um who's wonderful um and yeah a bunch of others some really great like esteemed like british actors who were who were great okay. um and yeah it was it was wonderful um I, yeah, it felt very surreal. And it was a nice, it was a nice mix of like, you know, family time. My family came out with me. Yeah, I was going to ask, how does, uh, how did that work? Because you were like roughly 12 years old around then. So moving yeah, to yeah. I think Italy when it for shot, two months. I, was, I think when it shot, I was 10. And then, oh, yeah, okay. so my, yeah, I came out probably when I was closer to 12. You're, you're, you're right. Um, So yeah, I think when my family just came out with me, it, thankfully it shot over the course of the summer and it was, okay. it was timed well with my, my summer um, holiday. So my siblings <laughs> came and my mom came as well. And it was almost like a little vacation of sorts. Um, and then, yeah, my dad would just come and visit on the weekend. So it all worked out. Um, we were very fortunate to, that it did, but it was, uh, yeah, well-timed. Uh, what was the award process like? Oh, I have no idea. Um, and I can't <laughs> believe that you uh, um, brought that up. I forgot about it. I actually, I'm at my um, parents' house for a day or two. Um, and that award is sitting in the other room. Um, <laughs> and I look at it. I'm like, what the? You gotta go heck? grab it. Um, yeah. What? Yeah, go grab it. Go grab it? All right. Yeah. I will. I will. Here, <laughs> let, me, um, let me, what do I do? How do I pause this? I'm going to stop the video really quick. Oh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm showing this right now. <laughs> it's too funny. Um, here we go. And you're going to see um, my parents' dog, too. Oh, wait, wait. How do I do this? There we go. Here it is. I don't <laughs> really know. Yeah, it's a very interesting looking award. Um, yeah. 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 So I don't know who, how I got entered in that. I don't know how I, it's, I don't know how I um, won that. I was not there to receive the award okay. because I think I forget. Maybe I was on the East coast at the time. I don't know, but it was, yeah. I don't know if they even still do these anymore. Young artist awards. This was 2004. This is the 25th anniversary. I, I have no idea. Couldn't tell you how I won it. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> so why. do you just like, did your parents tell you or just get like a, no. Call or something say, hey, did. you won the award. Yeah, I think my manager did. And when I was out in LA, he told me that and was like, oh, and here's a little swag bag that came with the <laughs> award. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I don't really know much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And then how yeah. how did you get with the, get to the series monk? How did we get there? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So when I finished that um that film. And uh, I, I remember when filming wrapped up for that, it was pretty much timed um, with when we were moving back to the States. Um, okay. So moved back to the U.S. Um, one of the producers from the film. Sorry, I have like something stuck on my I fuzz. Oh, OK, there we go. Um, so one of the producers from the film, um, he he was really awesome. His name is Frank Dolger. He does a lot of cool stuff with, with HBO still, I think. Um, but he asked my mom if I wanted to continue doing this. And my mom, you know, then was faced with the moral, moral dilemma of like, mm -hmm. do I give her the op like the option? She's 10 years old. Like, does she know what she's in for? And if I don't yeah. give it to her, will she, will I regret it? Well, will I regret it. Will she hold it against me? Um, she decided to, you know, extend the, the option my way and then let me decide and, you know, presented a very real case of like, you know, this is, if you do it, you have, you know, this yeah, is what yeah. this would look like and what it would mean for, you know, yeah. us, me, you, everything. So, um, you know, I appreciate her extending that, that option to me. Um, and I said, I wanted to keep doing it. So instantly they, they set me up with a manager and it all just kind of went from there. And I think the first, one of the first couple of things I auditioned for, which this does not happen, um, was very, very lucky, um, was monk. So I ended up getting that part pretty quickly after, um, yeah. after, yeah the the filming of my house in Umbria and moving back to the states and then things kind of took off from there so I didn't really get a chance to or have a chance to really wrap my head around anything um I just kind of submitted myself to the the ride so to speak interesting how did the audition for Monk come up with you know Sharona's departure oh yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, yeah was that like planned in advance or did you just kind of see it and like oh I want to do that one and see that yeah, one. I don't even know at the time because I was so young. Um, are you saying mm. with like Biddy Shram and everything leaving and the time yeah. of that? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I think that it's my understanding that that had already had been decided. Uh, and okay. she'd kind of, you know, there were negotiations and they, they'd they already figured out, you know, um, or landed on the fact that they were going to have a new assistant come in. Right. So mm -hmm. that, that, that had already happened prior to this. I don't really remember my first audition. Um, I remember the screen test. I, I don't remember kind of the moment of, of receiving the lines. And I don't think I even really knew what monk was. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, or what it was, uh, what it was all about. Um, I was, I mean, I was so young. I think I was like, yeah, 12. And I was more focused on what was going on in school and getting adjusted mm -hmm. to like my life on the you know East coast after moving back from England. So yeah. I don't really remember anything about the audition process. Um, I only remember the screen test, which was like my, I think my third or so, you know, um, audition, but mm -hmm. which um, screen tests are a lot more high visibility, high stakes, and it's a little bit yeah. more like pressure. Uh, so I definitely remember that. And I remember meeting Tony and trailer um, for that final audition, but I do not remember like coming across <laughs> the lines or anything. And I don't think I would have understood anything about, Sure. the phenomena around the show uh or the phenomena that is the show um mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time either so probably and, for the better. and then how is it like having a having a tv mom like trailer having <laughs> oh she's so great it's i mean it's wonderful i was very very spoiled with the environment um very lucky in terms of the environment that um that monk 
um, kind of, you know, fostered for me. It was a really healthy one. And um, trailer was excellent. She's the best, you know, she's like a, a sister, mom, stage mom, you know, mm-hmm. a screen mom all in one. So she was really excellent um, and really took me under her wing over the, the years. So she was amazing. And what were, uh, how, how was it like growing up on the set of Monk and being an actor and uh, having life like kind of revolve around that too? Yeah, um, it was, it's funny talking about it now. It feels very surreal. It doesn't really feel like it ever happened to me. Mm. Um, I feel like I've lived a lot of li- lives, a lot of different lives um, in the last 30 years. Um, but yeah, no, it was really, really great. Um really fun. And again, everyone was just, everyone was just, um, real, like really just kind and warm and and friendly. And Mm -hmm. and it was the best, like healthiest possible environment for a young, young child actor to be in. So it was really excellent. Um, it was, I remember like riding my bike all around the set. Um, when we got bikes one season for the rap was like the rap party gift. Um, I, you know, there, there was always, always somebody from makeup willing to play like Mad Libs with me or something in between takes. So it was just, it was really fun and really, um, you know, they mm-hmm. let me be a child, which was nice um, yeah. and definitely played by the rules with the child labor laws and everything. Mm-hmm. So I had a really healthy, happy, easy time. Um, it was wonderful. Very lucky. Do you ever have an instance your friends invited you over for something? You're like, oh, I can't, I gotta go be on TV. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of that. And it, yeah, it sounds, it sounds cool. I think at the time what makes you, um, what makes you different as a kid, right. Um, sometimes isn't, isn't the best, um, mm. in terms of it doesn't lend itself well in terms of, you know, fitting in and everything. So, um, it sounds cool. Sometimes it, it gave me like negative attention. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it, yeah, I missed lots of, um, events. I don't think I spent like one birthday growing up um, where I was actually here uh, or like here, meaning like back on the East coast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all things considered, um, really felt like I had the best of, of both worlds. Now, what were some of your favorite things about the show? Ooh, that's a great question. My favorite things about the show were the people, um, for mm-hmm. sure. Like the crew, the cast, everybody just knew everybody, the warmth and the familiarity. It was really like a second family. And we really had like the same like core people through my, I filmed it from 12 to 18. So like, you know, just about six years all in and the consistency, um, it really was my second family. So, and it was because of those people, everybody from Tony to trailer to, you know, all the, all the crew members, um, the prop folks, the lighting folks, the, the mm-hmm. people that would pick you up every day, like everyone was just so close and had a great time on that set. And it, and it showed, um, I also loved you know, honestly, the, the, the warm ups for each scene, right. When we go in mm-hmm. and just watching the process happen, watching Tony and watching trailer and watching Ted and, and Jason and watching the directors and the producers, how they like, you'd come onto that set with your lines, um, you know, your, your, um, set of lines and you wouldn't have them memorized yet. Nobody would, um, you'd be mm-hmm. drinking your coffees, you'd be dressed down, you'd be, and you would do the reads to kind of see how the scene would play out. And then you'd right. start and watching that energy and watching people figure out, okay, here's where we're going to film. And Tony's going to say this. I'm just watching where they would take it was so fun. And like the energy was so, um, invigorating. So I love mm-hmm. that for sure. Um, but those are two of the main things. I love the food too, as a kid, the food was great, <laughs> great craft services, lots of popcorn, <laughs> lots, of cookies, lots of cookie dough. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, yeah. uh, you said the show wrapped up about when you were like 18 years old and like right around the time for college and you did a few other appearances and stuff after that but then you went to college and you went to Fordham University and you want to talk a little about your uh post-acting career sure yeah um yeah so that's right I did uh go to college um I felt like you know again I'd been kind of towing two different lines um throughout my, my growing up, right. I had this very normal side of my life. And then I had a very unconventional side of my life and they were kind of, you know, there's a point where, you know, I came a time where I had to make a decision. Right. And kind of was like, it was going to be like, which, which route do you want to go down? And, um, I knew that I, I didn't, you know, while I was, I was super successful and like I had, was very lucky and, and really enjoyed my ride. Um, you know, 
ride being, you know, the 11 years in that industry or however many years, 12 years. Um, yeah, I just, I felt like I was clearly feeling this pull in another direction for a reason. Um, I really wanted the opportunity to pursue higher education, um, and get, you know, my college degree, especially because, you know, um, that industry is super fickle. And while I thought I was, I don't think I was bad at it. I just think statistically, (laughs) what's the likelihood of having a, you know, um, continuing the momentum and success that I'd seen. I was like, I don't know what I don't know, but I don't sure. think I like have this deep burning passion for it. Like so many other people do. So mm-hmm. I decided to, yeah, go to school and study communications and media studies. And, um, from there I, yeah, started working in media, um, and advertising, which is where I've been for like eight years now. And I'm very, I'm very happy um, doing what I do. So it's been great. It's a good mix of like my, my acting skills and like kind of the foundations mm-hmm. there, but I'll, um, also, you know, it gives me the ability to think creatively and to, to write and to, you know um, yeah, it's just kind of like a fusion of a lot of um, areas of, I don't know um, my past that I, I really enjoy. So yeah. yeah. Now, how's uh, your personal life been? Because I see on Instagram, you keep very busy. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. My personal life's been good. Um, Yeah, I'm definitely keeping busy. I love to travel. I like mm-hmm. to read. I like to cook. Um, I like to hang out with my friends. Um, And yeah, I've been in the city for quite a long time since, yeah, I went to school at Fordham University, like you mentioned before. So I'm just still uh, keeping busy and and just living life to the, the fullest. Um, but now no, no, I, no acting, uh, in my immediate future. Um, I know I get that. People ask me that a lot. So I'm probably, yeah, staying out of that, that spotlight for now. Um, but it was, it was a fun, fun run for sure. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, without acting, what, uh, what do you hope for like in the future? What's your maybe five-year plan? Just kind of keep oh. doing what you're doing. Living yeah. life, you know, having fun. Yeah, exactly. I think that um, if five years from now I am still fulfilled and happy, I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's it. I don't really have a, a bigger plan so much as just continuing to enjoy um, my life and, and um, you know, with my family and my friends and, and um, all that good stuff and just keeping fulfilled um, and living a meaningful, happy life. So that's what I, I work towards every day um but yeah Yeah. nothing nothing crazy it's not a very exciting answer but no it's okay it's a good answer though 